welcome back to my channel. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend with your loved ones. And today I am here to share a fictional horror story I wrote for your enjoyment. It's called The Oath and it revolves around four friends. Yang grew up with three best friends, May, D, and G. There is no memory anywhere that doesn't involve the four of them together. Once they hit adolescent years, they make an oath that they will never have romantic feelings for each other and always remain friends. But you can only count on yourself to keep a promise. One night, May reveals the truth about her feelings for Yang and jealousy surfaces, causing the death of one of their four friends. But when an oath is made and a promise is not kept, spirits return to make sure all ends are tied before leaving, and someone keeps coming back as a fourth wheel to make sure the cover-up is revealed. This story is written in both Hmong and English, with first-person shifting point of view. I hope you enjoy it. Childhood Memories The afternoon sun was high in the sky, causing the morning rain to dry and the red dirt gravel road to become warm to step on with bare feet. Ya Li was walking down the hill, a mere eight-year-old boy with long hair and bright brown eyes, wearing black pants and a small tribal shirt that he'd outgrown. In his hands was a small bow and arrow his father made for him to hunt. Of course, he had no luck and couldn't even aim correctly. He never told anyone how he would smash the animal's heads and then proclaim he'd hunted it with his bow. Ya was a red-mouthed boy, speaking without filter, and he picked on boys who were smaller than him. He pulled on little girls' braids and stole their dresses hanging to dry in the sun. Overall, he was a mean kid who no one liked very much. Next door to him was Zhe Cha, another eight-year-old little village boy who was quiet and timid. Jay was younger by two months, shorter by two inches, and heavier by ten pounds. He never had much growing up, since his father was an opium addict, and his mother had passed when he was young. He was an only child, and he grew up poor and unloved. He didn't speak unless spoken to, and he obeyed even when he wanted to argue. He was a good friend to have, if you just needed another body to look as if you were many in numbers. Jay and Ya were somewhat buddies on a good day, and rival enemies on a rainy day. The two of them were seen together at times, and then at times apart. No one in the village was clear on their relationship with each other. They were like brothers at one point, and then ready to murder each other the next day. But one thing was for sure. They couldn't live without the other, no matter how bad it was. Through hunting in the jungle, to playing games in the dirt road, Jay and Ya became childhood friends who learned to depend on each other when another was in trouble. The two boys were inseparable at times, and many even mistook them for actual blood brothers. Across the village, four gardens down, lived two girls who were born on the same day, month, and year. One was older by an hour, and another was smaller in height by a few inches. Di Mua was the older one, and Mei Ta was the one who arrived right after Di had her first bath. The two girls were good friends growing up, braiding each other's hair and lending clothes to wear. They were like two sisters who came from different mothers, and the families were close. When they turned eight years old, they blossomed into beautiful beings who had rosy cheeks and long black hair. Their eyes were lively, and they spoke with gentle tones. Their parents were extremely happy of how loving the two girls were toward each other. The day Zhe and Ya met the two girls was on a regular afternoon where the boys were playing games in the dirt. Mei and Di were walking back from washing their clothes in the nearby watering hole, and a few village boys were chasing them with sticks. Ya and Zhe watched as the two girls' voices were screaming for help, and Ya picked up a rock and tossed it at one of the boys' back. He immediately went down and grunted like a pig as his friends surrounded him. Both Dee and May ran to stand behind the two boys, 
as a group of bullies pull their friend up. Jay Mo, Gasa Dolaga. Chia got them on now, Galala Zaparito Gushao Law. Ible Gumoke Guzike, Gamakia. This bully was someone Ya and Jay knew very well. His name was B, and he was an overconfident boy who thought everyone should obey him. Ya stepped forward, picked up another rock, and smiled at the group of bullies. Oh, da halu kun chai ta le an du wo ni du wo. Ka sa tia ka he gu li ka e gu yin chai lo. Ka pa pao ha tia gu tu ve le pe chi tu neng du li ka na. Je, shuo kai ke neng du na sha. Je immediately stepped forward and held up both his hands. Kao tu ndi te, ke kao tu neng du ma kao yu lo du wo. Ka pa sa ya tu kao yi. Ka tu ne ka yu ta du wo lo. And what happened next? was a collision of hands, fists, legs, and fingernails scratching that left the bullies on the grave dirt ground and Jay and Ya standing above them with May and Dee grabbing each a handful of the bullies' hair. Ta! Jua! 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 Ji oi zhong zi ni la! This came from B, whose nose was bleeding as May let go of his hair, and they scrambled back to where they came from. The two girls turned to the two boys, and that moment of introduction led to the beginning of lifelong friends and childhood memories. As children growing up, the four of them saw each other through the losing of childhood teeth, fine childlike hair, and plump baby bodies taking shape into adolescent. They were often caught playing together with Jay and Ya walking behind the girls when returning home, and the girls sometimes bringing food for the boys. The parents didn't seem to mind, as long as they were not getting into trouble. The innocent years of childhood memories were full of laughter, growth, and a time where they would never be able to return to again. I wonder where are you now? The Oath When Dee reached the age of 13, she suddenly blossomed overnight, becoming an incredibly beautiful woman with long, thick black hair, and her cheekbones took a contouring that left her more angelic than ever. Her body began to curve out in places where women normally did, and her chest began to show. May, however, was a late bloomer and was still very skinny-like and had little bosom and had a stick-like figure. Her hair was fine, constantly knotted, and she had a high, childlike pitched voice. But the two girls complimented each other well together, and jealousy was rare among them. Jay began to tone up and lost his baby fat as he grew up. When he hit the age of 13, he finally lost his little boy voice, and when he spoke, it was a deep toned voice that demanded attention. But Ya, yeah, Ya yeah only grew more handsome as he grew older and added more height and muscle mass. The square jaw got more deeper and his manly shape took on a very attractive build. Villagers everywhere spoke about the four of them together and some even mentioned about a possibility of them getting married to each other one day. That was the start of the oath sprung from the lips of Ya himself one afternoon while the four of them sat together in the jungle after a hunting trip. There was a litter of small birds beside them, and Dee and May were busy plucking the feathers as Ya poured four small cups of wine. Mlongna, he began. Dejao nishira na jejao hai lu ho lu jyoto tsa ni run jay la. Ta shi, nu na gu sa ta ka pe de pun yu na hao i ka de kya lu o ke. Ni pa gan ta ku hao. Jay perked up and smiled. Ya kicked him in the leg, and he laughed as Ya stood up. Ya 
chỉ bố xin lũ linh công đầu xin lũ linh công muốn trồng nụ phong yêu sư nếp bỏ rong đi stood up and planted her hands on her hips wow cha hai lũ đã tham mộ na cô tự bỏ nếp ở tu cọ bắt thầu nếp hai lũ mà ai cô yêu cha lông xé là bỏ nếp trồng nếp lông trồng na khi số chấp lỡ lỡ cả na she took a cup from him cô cha lũ cô yêu sai nếp trồng nhà lũ cô ở tu nuôi nhà cô lũ sừng sư Jay stood up and took the other cup. Gucimanu, yon yon ne ato ka chali ku jamu a. Ku chalu tia. Everyone then turned to Mei, who was still sitting on the ground, looking up at them. She forced a smile and then she stood up and reached for a cup. Uh, ku la iya tia. Ku chisa pla, peza ke pon yu wo jong chapla. Ku chalu wo nu mo mu tai shi neng. Ya smiled and then he took out a small needle, pricking his thumb. A gentle flow of blood appeared, and he let it fall into his own cup of water. Gun Cheng Tia, you need to long share, and you can share with your guest. He handed the needle to Jay, who followed. D shortly after, and Mei, who hesitated a moment. Shi Zhong Ka, Ya proclaimed. The four cups met in the middle, where a splatter of wine exploded from the collision, and each one drank from their cup. Xin Hu Nam Mu, Bei Ye Pong Yu, Nha Zhu Ka. Chỉ bố ý tư xí lũ nền công đầu. Dạ nữ tư chẳng mô tư bảo xí á. Cô yá tư yá mô tư nâng lệch trẻ tạo hôn tên tên nào chỉ bố bảo nhìn gì lạ. Nhìn cho nhìn cho lũ nà. Yeah, I don't understand the concept of the human heart, even now at the age of 19. I once made a pact, an oath, with my three friends to never have romantic feelings as we grew up and grew older. The main purpose of this was because villagers were speaking of me marrying either Dee or May to be my wife. We had spent so much time together that everyone assumed we were in love. But we were only friends until I didn't want to be friends. So I was afraid of someone hurting my heart. That's why I made the oath. I took the first step to make sure that if anyone were to marry the woman I secretly loved, it wouldn't be my closest friend Jay. I had to bound him from completing this so I could be able to live my life in peace. Sure, as a young boy, you don't see the girl whose nose was always running with snot and being such a loud crybaby as attractive. But as time changes, so does a person. And suddenly one day, you look over and the girl you protected as a kid turns out to be the woman you want as a lover. It's God's punishment to me for thinking I could outrun this by simply becoming her protector like a brother she wanted. I didn't expect to see she would change the way she did or that her body would develop the way it did overnight. It made me question everything inside me and so I opted to create an oath to make sure the man who I called friend couldn't have her if I couldn't either. Little did I know that I would end up making the biggest mistake of my life. I can only control my heart and my thoughts. I cannot control theirs. And the dark thoughts that secretly lay in their minds severed everything between all of us, and I would live to regret the very moment I decided to make the oath. If I knew what I know now, perhaps things would have been different and I wouldn't be sitting here today wondering how I could stop seeing the two eyes that stared at me from dark corners. I was a jokester always having the greatest of jokes to tell and share because I liked a good laugh. If anyone wanted to hear something funny, I opt to share. And after I was done, the entire room would be laughing and clapping their hands. I was a winner among them, always because of my way to win a crowd by my choice of words. As a young child, I was always good at winning over people. It was my talent. You put me into a room, and I could talk to someone to believing in you with words I could cough up. D. She and May came into me and Jay's life at a young age, eight to be exact, and the four of us became friends and learned to keep each other safe throughout our childhood years. But no one ever told me that people changed as time happens to move along. I assumed they stayed the same until adolescence took over and showed me what Dee could possibly turn into. 
and that was trouble. Because the feelings I feared was overbearing and spilling out into the open. They were making their way into the glands I sweat, to the words I spoke, to the actions I took. It was unfolding in a very unkind way to me, and I was afraid of it. Watching Dee's body turn from girl to woman was painful, and I had to restrain myself from hanging around her. But I also didn't want Jay to feel the same way, because as a man, I knew what lingered in his mind. We had both been in each other's lives for far too long, and if I didn't take ownership of his feelings, he would strip away the one thing I wanted. The oath. I remembered it like yesterday, in the jungle, standing with the three of them, our hands outstretched with our cup of wine, the blood from our thumb that soiled the clean color of the liquid in our cups a crimson shade, and the tanging taste of it as it went down my throat. The oath. Never will we be lovers, and always will we be friends. As I drank my wine, I watched Dee's throat moved up and down as she swallowed it, and it turned me on, making every fiber of my being unable to withstand the thought of having her. The oath. Remember the oath. You developed it, so you better hold true to it, or else the person you will be removing is yourself. But how can I? when all I think about is how warm her body would be pressed against mine. How can I force my thoughts of her to disappear when every aching moment I'm awake is filled with her smiling face? How can I pretend while I stand next to her that I will promise to be her lifelong brother when I want nothing more than to hold her with love? There's a huge distance between me and the rest of them now. I find myself making excuses not to be with them because I can't hide the fact that I'm falling more and more in love with Dee. Every time she laughs, every time she speaks, every time she breathes the same space, I am consumed with a constricted chest that makes me want to wrap my arms around her and never let go. I can't break my thoughts, and when I try to ignore it, it becomes harder to endure. I see that more and more gentlemen callers are arriving to her doorstep and asking her hand in marriage. I see these men in town every day, and I want to beat them senseless to stay away from my girl. But who am I to detain them when I am not allowed to love her openly? Who am I to restrict them from seeking her when I have no permission to deny them? For a while now, I have been feeling lost and refusing to believe the simple truth that I never had D to begin with. She may have been a good friend from the start, but a great friend she would always be to me, and that is all. I wanted to keep the oath alive by following it. And I also knew that a big part of Jay felt the same way. He and I grew up together so I could read his mind like no tomorrow. This was my way to not only restrict myself, but also him. This was also my way to keep him from getting what I couldn't have. But in the pain of it all, I denied the greatest thing in my life, and now I was paying heavily for it. D, why did you have to become so beautiful to tease me? My parents had left for the garden, and I was alone in the small house we lived in. I woke up later than expected because I was up all night long with my own demonic thoughts about D. As I went outside to wash my face, I saw Jay walking toward me with an axe over his shoulder. He thinned out some more since the last time I saw him, making him look even more handsome than I wanted him to be. I ignored his question as I threw cold water on my face and sucked in the breath at how icy the water was. He dropped his axe down and came to pat me on the back with more force than needed, and I exerted a breath. Chutelo! I cried as I turned to look at him with angry eyes. His face broke into confusion and asked, I ignored him and dropped the pail in the barrel of water. Right as I said that, I heard the sound of Dee's laughter coming from over the hill. Her long black hair blew in the wind and her gentle eyes filled the desire for life. May was walking beside her, all skin and bones, with her hair and a long braid down her back. The two were giggling as they made their way to us. Dee, Jacob Blanglona, Jay said loudly. Dee laughed and poked a finger at his shoulder. 
That phrase cut me deeper than a thousand knives as I was beaten silent. I watched as Jay's face lit up with happiness and May's eyes dimmed with the darkness I felt in the pit of my belly. May warned. Dee smiled and she put her hands together in a prayer. Jay smiled, a blessed look upon his face. I smiled as I stepped forward. Smiling, she replied, Jay turned to me and nudged my arm. I shrugged my shoulders. Dee's face broke into horror as she walked forward and pinched my arm. Laughing, I purposely snatched her hand and stared at her nails. She jerked her hand away. That hit me like a ton of bricks, and I smiled widely as she crossed her arms, waiting for my reply on her invitation. She jumped up and down and hugged me tightly. Her curves felt against my body. I wished she didn't do that. It only made restraining myself harder to do. She left instructions to meet her at her house tomorrow morning before sunrise. Both her and May left together as I watched them disappear over the hill. The ache in my body returning as I thought about her warm embrace. Thank you for tuning in. Chapter 2 will be out shortly.